Hey, book buddies. Thrilled to welcome you to Read Read Hooray. Megan is eight, a huge book lover, totally obsessed with books. She has been gobbling out books ever since she could remember, and has explored countless worlds through pages of amazing stories. She wants to share not only with me, but with you, and build book-loving community together. Let's jump into our next reading adventure with Megan. It's me, Megan, your favourite podcaster. Today I am going to introduce this book to you called The Day the Crayons Came Home by Drew Daywelt and Oliver Jeffers. Well, Oliver Jeffers was the illustrator. And it contains special glow-in-the-dark drawings. One day Duncan and his cranes were happily colouring together when a strange stack of postcards arrived for him in the mail. So the first letter was called Dear Duncan, not sure if you remember me. My name is Maroon Crayon. You only colour with me once to draw a scab. But whatever anyway, you lost me two years ago in the couch. Then your dad sat on me and break me in half. I would never have survived had Paperclip not nursed me back in my health. I'm finally better, so come and get me. And can Paperclip come too? He's really holding me together. Sincerely, Maroon Crayon. Duncan, Duncan's bedroom upstairs, this house. Funny, let's continue. Dear Duncan, no one likes peas. No one even likes the colour pea green, so I'm changing my name and running away to see the world. Sincerely, Esteban the Magnificent, the crayon formerly known as pea green. Duncan, Duncan's bedroom upstairs, this house. So let's have a look at the next one. Next one is from Mrs. Neon Crayon, I mean Neon Red Crayon. Hi Duncan, it's me, Neon Red Crayon. Remember that great holiday we had with your family? Remember how we laughed when we draw a picture of your dad sunburn? Remember dropping me by the hotel pool when you left? Clearly you do not, because I'm still here. How could you miss me? Anyway, after eight months waiting for you to come back and get me, I guess I'm walking back. You are left behind friend, Neon Red Crayon. Duncan, Duncan's room, Duncan's house. Duncan, it's us, yellow and orange. We know we used to argue over which of us was the colour of the sun, but guess what? Neither of us wants to be this colour of the sun anymore. Not since we were left outside and the sun melted us together. You know the real colour of the sun? Hot, that's what. We're sorry for arguing. You can make green the colour of the sun for all we care. Just bring us home. You're not so sunny, friends. Yellow and orange. Crayon. Duncan, Duncan's room. Inside that house there. Hey Duncan, I'm not sure you recognise me. After the horrors I've been through, I think I was Tancron or maybe Burn Slanner. I don't know. I can't tell anymore. Have you ever been eaten by a dog and pooped up the living room rug? Because I have. I have been eaten by a dog and pooped up on the rug. Duncan, and it's not pretty. Not pretty at all. I'm more covered fuzz than crayon now can you please bring me back your indigestible friend tan or possibly burnt sienna crayon duncan his bedroom upstairs dearest duncan um could you please open the front door i still need to see the world sincerely esteban the magnificent duncan duncan's bedroom upstairs this house 
Hey Duncan, remember last Halloween we we, we told your little brother there was a ghost under under the basement stairs. Then we drew that scary stuff on the wall. Sure it was funny when he 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 ran sc- screaming, right? But it it wasn't so funny when you 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 forget to take me out uh, uh, out of the basement. Please come and get me. I'm kind of terribly horrified. Your scared friend. Glow in the dark rain. Duncan. Duncan's bedroom upstairs. This house. I'm using my funny reading voice, huh? <laughs> Dear Duncan, looks like I'm ne- I'm almost home. Been through China, Canada, and France, I think. Just crossing Newcastle by camel now. Newcastle has giant pyramids, right? See you soon, Neon Red Crayon. P.S. Next up, the North Pole, I think. Duncan, Duncan's room, Duncan's house. Duncan, does page eight of Pirate Island ring a bell? Kind of a big payday for Captain Greenbeard there, don't you think? And no bronze or silver in that pile, huh? I told you it made me blunt. If you colour each coin individually, but would you listen? No. Now, I can't colour anything at all. Your pointless friend, Gold Crayon. Duncan, Duncan's room upstairs. I had to write it for him. This is not fun for me either, you know. So I was just reading about the pencil I had to write the letter for him because Gold Crayon can't write now. If you read it, you would have seen a picture of a haul of loot, a bad day for Cabin Boy. Duncan didn't colour a bad day for Cabin Boy, but he did colour a haul of loot. And you would have seen that. Dear Duncan, I've seen the world. It's raining. I'm coming back. Esteban the Magnificent to Duncan. Duncan's bedroom, upstairs, this house. Hi Duncan, you're probably wondering why my head is stuck to your sock? A question I ask myself every day. Well, it's because last week you left me in your pocket, I ended up in the dryer, I landed on your sock and now he's stuck to my head. Can you please come and get me? Also, why does everything you wear still smell after it's washed? Your stinky, socky, stucky, on head buddy, turquoise crayon. P.S. Sock says hi. Duncan. Duncan's room. Duncan's upstairs. Dear Mr. Duncan, I know I'm not your crayon. I know I belong to your baby brother, but I can't take him anymore. In the last week alone, he bit in the top of my head. Put me in the cat's nose, draw on the wall and try to colour rubbish with me. The worst part is that he is a terrible artist. I can't tell what he's drawing. Ah, uh, donkeys? Monkeys? Donkey monkeys? Castro says every child is an artist, but I don't know. He don't think I met your brother. Please rescue me, your desperate friend. Big chunky toddler crayon. Duncan. Duncan's room upstairs, this house. Duncan, greetings from the Amazon rainforest. Making great time, I think I'm almost home. Me and Red Crayon. Duncan, Duncan's room, Duncan's house. Hello Duncan, it's me, Brown Crayon. You know exactly why I ran away, buddy. Everyone thinks I get all the great colouring jobs, chocolate, puppies, ponies, lucky me, right? But they don't know what else to use me to colour, do they? I don't think so, the rest of that drawing was great. But did it really need that final brown scribble? I'll come back, but please let's stick to chocolate, okay? Your very embarrassed friend, Brown Crayon. Duncan, Duncan's room, Duncan's house next door. So Bear Goes Into the Road by Duncan. So there was a picture of a bear in the wood and little brown scribble was supposed to be poop. Duncan was sad to learn of all the crayons he lost, forgotten, broken or neglected. Is that how you say it? 
Yeah, I think so. Over the years. So he ran around, gathered them up, but Duncan's crown were also damaged and differently shaped than they used to be that no longer fitted in the crayon box. So Duncan had an idea. He built a place where every crayon would always feel like home. There's no dogs down there, are there? Nope. No turkeys either. Oh, you flatter me, but it's not real chocolate. Let's have a party. This one's from my blue period, but it's not really blue. Lilac. I think that door's for us. Wee door, big door. All crayons welcomed. The crayon fort. No dogs allowed. Ah, there you are. I could do with a haircut. Nope. I mean, hope that is in a metal detector. No, I think everyone is welcome. Look, good lads. Who are you wearing? Ooh, I think he does. He goes by Ted. I'm Ted. And then in Cleverland, I got to hide the Great China. So let's have a look about the crayons here. There was the crayons and Duncan mostly. Yeah, pretty much. And I liked the neon red crayon because she was so funny. And the setting was, I don't know where the setting was. There wasn't a really um, specific place for this, but I'll just say Duncan's house. The part that I liked the most was when um, Neon Red Crane said, Going through the Amazon rainforest, Duncan. See you soon, I think. And yeah, she keeps saying I think, but she's actually through the snow, not the Amazon rainforest. All um, crayons have lots of troubles and they need Duncan to help them and that was pretty nice because Duncan gathered all their crayons up and made something for them to live in so they won't be so annoyed anymore. So yeah that was a good, a really 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 good story. I hope you liked it and let's have a look at what emotion I had after I read this book. If I was to um, say an emotion, I would say really unhappy for all the other crayons and also really annoyed because Duncan keeps making trouble for them and also really unhappy for Duncan as well because, well, Duncan tried really hard to keep his crayon self safe, but his crayons seem to have thought, okay, Duncan, you haven't done pretty much today. And yes, he was really unhappy, but there was a solution and he made a fort, the crayon fort. There were a few connections to these books. I don't usually do this, but I will today. There was a few other picture books by Arthur Jeffers. Yeah, pretty much. So today the rating is the maximum is 10. And today I'll give this a 10 because it is a really funny story. And I like how crayons um, raise all their problems to Duncan so he would help them and five for because it was a really creative story four because it was really funny and they get to um be alive and write letters to duncan and then they get to yeah pretty much and they get to live in the big crayon fort that was a really lovely story i would love to share other stories with you i hope you keep reading and stay tuned be sure to check out all my podcasts and I'll hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody.